Good evening. I hope y'all are doing all right on this October 6th, 2023. It's been a while since I've done a YouTube uh, video uh, on this channel. But hopefully we can do some more and uh, talk about some interesting his history and stuff like that. Um, the book we're going to be reading about today is uh, another Verna May Sloan book, and this is called uh, How We Talked. Simply, the, the, the title of this book is How We Talked by Verna May Sloan. I've done one about Verna May Sloan uh, a few months back ago. You can find it on this same YouTube page. Uh, but we're going to be talking about a little bit of history about Verna May Sloan. Um, just a little bit of history. She was born in Hyman, Kentucky to Isom B. Sloan and Sarah Owen Sloan. Uh, Verna May grew up in eastern mountains of Kentucky near the town of Pippa Passes. She is the 10th generation of her family to live in eastern Kentucky. She was raised by her sister, Lorinda for the majority of her childhood. She died at the age of 94 in the same town. Her mother died uh, six, six weeks after giving birth to her, leaving Sloan's father alone as the primary caregiver. Um, one of her most famous books is one, like I said, that I'd done a few months back ago, uh, What My Heart Wants to Tell. And... It says here, Sloan's most famous book was published in 1979 when she was 65 years old. Her novel was called What My Heart Wants to Tell and was published by the New Republic. Her memoir focused on the rural hills of Caney Creek in Knott County, Kentucky. Ver Vernon May Sloan wrote What My Heart Wants to Tell for her grandchildren and to honor her father, Ison B. Sloan, who everyone called Kitten Eye. Her f most famous quote in that book is this. Listen to this quote. God knew that it would take brave and sturdy people to survive in these beautiful but rugged mount rugged hills. So he sent us his very strongest men and women. So uh, anyway, a very good a very good book, what my heart wants to tell. Um and she, she made sure that all of her grandchildren received a copy. And um, uh, her other, uh, she she actually wrote six books in total. I didn't even know she had written any other books. I don't know how many out there uh, in, even here in our, my hometown knows how many books she actually written. She had actually written six books all together. Um, and I've read What My Heart Wants to Tell, and I've read This and How We Talked, which is a very good one. There's an actually an NPR uh, show that comes on 90.9 WEKU, uh, and it's called Away With Words. Well, this book kind of puts me in mind uh, about that. And so, uh, um, you know, we, we all have words that we use sometimes I, I'll be for instance I, I'll give you a for instance I, I was on my um, uh, oculus when I first got my oculus headset my virtual reality oculus headset uh, and I was playing it one night when I was playing paintball and as I was playing paintball this one speaks up and she says, Oh, you're from Kentucky. Yay, from Kentucky. And I'm like, how'd you know I was from Kentucky? And she's like, you can't hide your accent, boy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, but she could tell just by the way that I worded my words where I was from, my accent. You know, we all have accents and words that we use in these different parts. We have words that we use around here. Um, and... This is kind of what this book is about, the way we talk. And um, going back, da, 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 going back here, I was reading a part of this, <clears throat> how we talked, and this is something very, very interesting. Um, let's 
Um, and reading on page 11 of this, it talks about, um, you know, how, how they learned uh, to do things. Um, for instance, learning to tell the time by the sun, the seasons in the stars, how to measure by using the length of the fingers, hands and arms spread, or walking stride, weather prediction by watching the formation of the clouds, how the smoke rose from the chimney, actions of the animals. And very true, very, very true. Sure, it was spiced with superstition, but among the chaff were kernels of truth. To remember which were the short months and which were the long ones, they counted the knuckles on the fist, each knuckle counting one, the space between one beginning with January for the first knuckle, the space between the first and second finger as February. Uh, the second finger, March, etc. The last one, July, then back to the beginning with August. All the knuckles were long months, the spaces between the short ones. Um, something very interesting there. I'd never heard that before. Um, when someone knocks on the door, you may hear a voice say, Come inside. Come in if your nose is clean. I fear that same before. Come in if your nose is clean. My, my aunt Boots would say that many a times. But long ago, people were not welcome if they had some contagious disease. An unclean or runny nose might be a sign of sickness. A clean nose meant a healthy and welcome person. Didn't know that either. <clears throat> uh, da, da, da. Let's see. Here's one, and she said it belongs to her family, and they said this many times in her family, uh, was the peanuts are coming up awful pretty. Belongs to our family, and oddly enough, means let's change the subject. This talk is going to hurt someone that's listening or cause us all to be sad. When my children are very small, my husband was away from home a lot of times. The children and I were alone. We had no close neighbors. There was only one bedroom, which was also a living room. After we had gone to bed, we would talk for a while, and I would not let them bring up any subject that might cause us to be sad just before we went to sleep. If it was something that needed to be discussed, it could wait until the next day. One night, something had bothered them, and they kept on going on again and again referring to it and I kept trying to talk away from it at last in desperation I said can't you all think of something else to talk about my oldest son ain't your mom our peanuts are coming up awful pretty that la that laugh followed uh, the laugh that followed chased all uh, chased away all the gloom and we went to sleep in a happy mood uh, da, da, da. But it's, uh, like I said, it's uh, this book is about the way we talked and uh, words that, um, uh, phrases that we used. And I've heard this, the words nigh to me can mean we are close kin. But it means a lot more than that. If you hear someone say of another person, he is nigh to me. It represents a closeness, a belonging to each other, that no one nor anything can come between, not even death. He's nigh to me. Um, but it's very, uh, very good book. Uh, very, very uh, uh, awesome book. And let me say, uh, I heard of one program in one state where they were teaching English, but they were also teaching the children why they used the words that they were actually using. You know, 
why they were using the words and why that particular location was using the phrases and how they got them phrases and how they got them words. Because a lot of the words were brought uh, uh, a lot of the words were were brought and phrases were brought over from other parts of the country and even overseas from our uh, ancestors. And were passed on from generation to generation. And they were actually seeing an improvement in the children's grades because they were learning, hey, we may talk a little different from other people, but we're smart. Okay. Um, even had poem my word of honor in here, and uh, I think I've done a book on that uh, a while back. If not, I will try and get one on of that book. But uh, poem my word of honor is uh, uh, is the title of a book. Uh, Richard Tite Martin's mother uh, wrote. And she has that on my word of honor. Um, da, da, da. But it's, it's, it's a very good book. A lot of uh, words like a coat bank. A small opening. Not as large as coal mines, where people dug coal up for their own use. We had coal banks uh, all around. You can still see a lot of evidence. Give me a drink of coffee on that. Ain't nigh done. Haven't finished yet. Uh, there's, like I said, there's other... Uh, other things out there uh, or here in this book that I really, really, I enjoyed just reading the whole book. Very good. And uh, I'm very much into genealogy. My, my uncle Guy Mullins, uh, he passed away back in May. Uh, and it, it, it really hurt my heart when he passed away. He loved to read, he loved to study genealogy, and he loved to read books. Uh, so did my Aunt Boots. She liked to read books too. Aunt Boots and Uncle Guy, brother and sister, two of a kind. But they, they all loved to, they, they both loved to read. And um, so I guess I get my love of reading probably from them. But um, Uncle Guy loved to read and Oftentimes, uh, he would uh, come in during uh, the summer when he, he lived away. F f the biggest majority of my life, he lived away, and then he moved back here during the later years, back to Kentucky. And um, but he lived in Connecticut. But when he would come back here uh, and stay, he would often have a book in his hand, and he would read. Read drinking coffee and reading a book of the morning. That was that was uh, uh, just an awesome memory that that I remember of my uncle guy. And something else he writes about in here, uh, you often see uh, maybe a couple dating or a couple uh, going out on a date, and somebody's like, "Well, they're sparking." I've heard that word many times. They're sparking. And how that scene came up was often uh, they would set a plate uh, in the cabins and uh, they would keep the fire going. So the neighbors would look over and they would see uh, the flames and the sparks coming out the chimney and they would be, they would know by that that they would be somebody up late at the house. So that's how the term came up, they're sparking. That was really interesting to me there. Uh, for instance, the word awful used many ways. Uh, awful pretty, real pretty. 
awful good. Real good. Um, awfulish crowd means a big crowd. Awfulish meeting, church service. We had an awful meeting today. I hear people say that many times. Meaning a good and wonderful meeting. It came the awful storm, a very, very large storm. Um, like I said, we we have words in our ways that are interesting. Mountain people, and uh, but I wouldn't trade this mountain life for the world because I love my mountain people. I love my mountain heritage. I really do. Um, people say I need to poke a paper bag. Or poke means to push. I ain't got a penny to my name. Means you're broke. And here's that one on page 35. Upon my honor. Upon my honor. You used to back up a statement as upon my honor. It's true. Upon my word of honor. In other words, it's true. It's true. I'll look back and I'll see if I've got that book on my YouTube page. If not, we will get it up here in the next few weeks. Uh... But she mentions that phrase here. Verna Mae Sloan does. How we talked. I heard my grandma say that many times. Pawn my word of honor. Um, just uh, goes through a lot of different words. Um, blood kin. Means we're related. Anyway, um, I encourage you to check this out at your local library. How We Talked. How We Talked by Verna Mason. Check it out at your local library. More than likely, you can get it on Interlibrary Loan, which is a very good program. I've gotten several books on interlibrary loan. My, li my library's not had it, and I've went to either Port Kenny Library or Letcher or Floyd or Pikeville, and I've asked them, hey, can you get this book? And most of the time, they'll have the book in my hand. But uh, reading this book brought back many memories. Uh, of the way my aunt Beulah May Ashley talked and my uncle Guy Mullins the way they talked and words that they used the stories they told and it, it, just amazing just amazing uh, one thing my uncle Guy always was interested in is uh, wanted to find as much history as he could and preserve as much history as he could. And I want to carry on that tradition. Like I said, after my Uncle Guy passed away, took a big chunk of my heart, kind of, spiritually speaking, out. Um, took off, I got to take off one day for his uh, funeral and uh, went back to work the very next day. I just, I, I just wasn't ready. But... Uh, it was like that next day. Uh, he, my uncle guy introduced me to a lot of my family that I didn't know. And he used to when he really got me interested in two genealogy. And he uh, introduced me to a cousin of mine. And I had no clue. I was hauling her great, great grandkid on my us at that time and the very next day I found that out and it just broke my heart broke my heart I pulled beside the road and I just had a moment of crying 
tears in my eyes when I was crying, but then I'm thinking, well, he's going on to a better place. He's not suffering anymore. And that helped me to know that he's with Jesus. So anyway, uh, check out that book by Verna Mae Sloan, How We Talked. And if you're a fan of Away With Words, I encourage you. I encourage you. Get this book. Check it out at your local library. Look for it online. Uh, let's see. Before I end this video. I don't want to make this video too very long. But before I enter it. Before I uh, close this video out. Uh, let me go to Amazon for a minute. And uh, Barnes & Noble. Just to see the prices. So I'll let you all know. Barnes & Noble, let's see if they have it in stock. They may and they may not, I don't know. Uh, and they do have it available online. Uh, how we talked and I also have the book what my heart wants to tell and they also have the book Ronnie's way and they're all uh, and this book right here in particular that I've got in my hand is two into one how we talked in common folks we will we'll be doing our book review in common folks hopefully within the next few weeks hopefully uh, but um, got it for basically around $25 and it is available online it is available online so I urge you to get on there and buy it get on there and check it out especially if you're a, a fan of Away With Words anyway God bless y'all and uh, we will talk at you the next time we do a book keep on reading keep on enjoying life Trust in the Lord, but mainly chase the rainbow. Reach for the stars. God bless.